This is an NCXT Creator PC. But it's, it's in a few boxes, we gotta unpackage it. It's actually packaged quite nicely as you'd expect. It needs to be shipped because things in here can break. But I didn't build this thing. Uh, actually, NZXT did, and they've been doing this for quite a while thanks to their BLD service, which we love for their transparency and component costs and flat rate build fee. However, in the case of this here pre-built and others like it, you won't see that $99 fee included. They build these in bulk, and while that does cut down a bit on customizability, it also saves you money. And in this video, we've partnered with them to show you the ins and outs of one of their more affordable creator PCs, geared for content creation, streaming, and just plain gaming. Are you ready? Stay with me. To get rid of that annoying Windows activation watermark, head on over to VIP SCD key and purchase a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for a fraction of the price of retail. Just use a secure payment method like PayPal, enter your product key into your PC settings window and say bye bye to the watermark. And be sure to use our offer code SKGS for a so sweet discount. Now, let's get the obvious out of the way. If you're anything like me, and I imagine a lot of you are, if I'm being blunt, you tend to be a bit hesitant about pre-builds in general, right? We as PC builders take pride in doing the work ourselves and choosing the components ourselves and that degree of customizability it feels nice, right? But obviously, we aren't the only folks on planet Earth. There is a huge market for pre-built PCs, and that's why sites like NZXT's BLD and other services like it exist. It's also easy for us to kind of look at things through a very narrow perspective and say, well, if you can't build your own PC with your own parts, you're just lazy. It's, it's so short-sighted to just assume that everyone is in the same situation you are, right? Some folks might not have the time. They just don't have the time between work, family life, other social events, etc. Maybe they just don't know how to build a PC. To us, it seems like an easy thing to do because we've done it several times, but you know, to, to the average person who's never touched any of these components, it can be daunting. Again, hence why BLD exists. But there is one other situation where buying a pre-built might make a bit more financial sense than building on your own, and that's sort of kind of the case that we've been experiencing for the past two years, and that's graphics cards being super freaking expensive for end consumers. If I was gonna spend $1,500 on an RTX 3080 for my own kind of custom build, but the implied cost of an RTX 3080 or 3070 or insert card here, is significantly lower. Let's say you're gonna save several hundred dollars by buying a pre-built because of the card in here, the implied cost of the card is so much lower, why wouldn't you buy the pre-build instead and save several hundred dollars? Uh, that was the case um, a few years ago during the first mining craze, and then it's more or less the case now, although graphics card prices are coming down a lot. And NZXT tells me that they're updating their prices uh, as frequently as possible to accommodate uh, or, or to account for uh, those reductions in their overhead as well. So the price of this isn't necessarily fixed, but I do wanna talk about it next. So I'll just come out and say it rather than kind of making you hunt for it. This is a 2600 $199 system, but it comes with a lot of pretty sweet components. This is the NCXT Creator Base PC, so there are two tiers above this in the Creator lineup. You'll find that you can get up to an RTX 3090 in here, which is pretty freaking boss, uh, but we have a 3070 Ti to start, which I think is still a great graphics card for 1440p and 4K even gaming in 2022. Uh, the CPU is a Core i7-12700K. You'll also find it paired with an Asus Prime Z690 motherboard, and you'll also find 32 gigs of Team group Delta DDR4. I think 32 is important here. This being a creator system, you will see benefits uh, with 32 or even 64 gigs of memory uh, in certain applications. You'll find two one terabyte Western Digital NVMEs, one blue and one black, a 750 watt 80 plus gold PSU, and a Kraken X63 AIO, all housed inside an H510 Elite, fitted with tons of RGB. This really is a killer rig for pretty much anything. It's well-rounded and it's also very balanced. Now, NCXT was super Super cool and again transparent about pricing. Uh, they were okay with me showing you this here. This is a PC part picker breakdown of pretty much everything in here. I tried to get the card as exact as possible, although you'll find that most 3070 Ti's as of time of filming are somewhere in the eight to nine hundred dollar ballpark. Uh, and that's just, you know, that's just the current uh, point in time here. This is what, late March? So if you happen to be watching this video six months from now, you're wondering why the head cards are so expensive. Well, obviously it's circumstantial. Uh, and th this of course is why NZXT is vocal about um, the fact that its prices aren't static. So if their costs go down, of course they're gonna roll that over to you as well as the end consumer so that they remain competitive with not only components, if you're just an individual component buyer, uh, but also other pre-built PCs as well. You know what? Something just crossed my mind. I wonder what cable management looks like behind this thing. I mean, this being an NZXT pre-built in an NZXT case, right, you would assume 
that they know what they're doing. I'm just going to check because I've seen some pretty rough pre-built cable management in my day, not from BLD, but from uh, other services. And so it's just nice to, yeah, keep them right on their toes, keep them accountable. And uh, yeah, it looks really clean back here actually. So they've used all of the uh, cable routing channels that you get in the H510. And we've got just a bit of excess cabling here at the bottom, which you can't really do anything about. Um, you kind of just have to shove it in there or attempt to wire it through the channels. And that to me looks even worse. So just keeping it down there looks fine. It's a clean build, honestly. Now I know I mentioned it a bit earlier, but just to show you what power supply you're gonna get in this creator base PC. This is a core reactor from XPG, which is Adata's gaming brand. Uh, you can see that the unit is not very long for an ATX unit so it's not going to take up tons of space in your basement you can always uh, add extra cables extra peripherals if you want you should have space there especially in a 510 uh, and it is 80 plus gold certified so I mean that's peace of mind right it's a very efficient power supply typically uh, the more efficient a power supply is right the better it has to be built in order to meet those standards that's not always the case but it is a good rule of thumb and we've tested these power supplies personally they are great now the next thing I want to do is turn this thing on of course we want to run some tests I want to show you what this thing is actually capable of if you are in the market Market. but there are some nice little creature comforts here if you're a first time like high-end modern computer user uh, NZXT does break it down for you how to set things up it's very convenient now if you're a first time modern computer user you're probably going to want to know a few things first off make sure that you have this switch at the rear this is a power supply here at the bottom flip to the on position that's the side of the switch with the line not the circle I know some of you we're like, Greg, why are you bothering with this? There might be new folks watching, so that's why I'm bringing it up. Also, if you have a discrete card like this here, it's gonna be the thing that sticks out from your motherboard, which is that large board in the back of your case. Make sure that you connect your display cable to that discrete card. It's gonna be one of these ports here, either display port or HDMI in this case. Do not connect up here. Uh, if you have an integrated graphics processor, then you'll still get picture out, but you won't get the full performance of your system because your discrete card is effectively being bypassed in games. And if you don't have an IGP, which is the case for most Ryzen CPUs in particular, then you're not going to get any picture out through these and you're going to wonder why your system is not working. So if you have one of these, just as a good rule of thumb, make sure to connect it down here. Everything has been plugged in. We'll flip the switch at the rear and we'll click the power up front. We'll click the power up front. There we go. Okay. <laughs> and make sure that we get a post. Obviously we should. These are all new components. And uh, actually, I didn't mention this earlier, but Windows should also be loaded uh, onto the primary boot device. So in this case, I assume it's going to be the top NVMe, the WD Black Drive. It is slightly faster. Uh, and when you get into Windows, everything should already be activated. You shouldn't have to worry about any of that either. It's all pretty much plug and play, and that's another plus with pre-builds. And a few seconds later, you can see we're already at the splash page for Windows setup. We'll get through this, and then we'll jump straight into uh, benchmarks. We'll do a few games, and then we'll also install Adobe Premiere, show you a few renders, how quick this system is to render 4K footage. Uh, we'll also run some export tests, maybe throw a Geekbench test in there in Cinebench. Uh, and uh, yeah, I think that'll give you a well-rounded idea of what this thing's capable of. Now, before we do anything, we definitely want to enable XMP in our BIOS. I'm showing you how to do that here uh, in this ASUS uh, UEFI. It's very simple. You can see on the left side, we're just clicking enable. Uh, we can go ahead and save and restart uh, as of this point, but I want to enable uh, multi-GPU or, or multi-monitor functionality in this ASUS BIOS because I want to uh, be able to utilize the IGP in the 12700K for Adobe Premiere Pro and other suites like it. I'll talk about this a bit more later, but uh, yeah, for now, I'm just going to make sure these two things are taken care of. So I'm going to kick things off with a blender. First, you can see here our scores. You can compare these with your own if you want to uh, to run this benchmark. I'll try to link these in the video description here. You can also see our system stats. Uh, moving on to Cinebench R23. It is just, there's something so magical about seeing this many different threads working together. Remember, there are P cores and E cores working here. So the P cores are going to be the uh, faster ones and more performance oriented ones. And uh, those will render their squares much quicker. But a score of roughly 22,000 is pretty freaking impressive. Now we're going to switch back to the Intel IGP, the integrated graphics processor in the 12700K in this rig. We're going to need to install uh, Intel graphics drivers uh, in order to get the IGP to actually work, but we can install the drivers without enabling the IGP or multi-monitor support in the BIOS, which is why you saw me do that a bit earlier. If all this is confusing, there are videos on YouTube that will uh, talk about this in more detail, but uh, once this is ready to go, we restart the system. You can see we're now in Premiere Pro, and I've got a five-minute 4K uh, 4K 30 FPS clip here. 
and you can see I'm scrubbing, everything looks very smooth, but where it really counts is in rendering. I'll pull up a task manager uh, window here, and you can see we have two different GPUs now being picked up by task manager. The first one obviously is the RTX 3070 Ti, that's the discrete card, the very large card in the system. The second, GPU Zero, is actually Intel UHD graphics, and this is what's baked into the 12700K. And of course, the big screen that you're seeing uh, in the task manager is the CPU itself. And while we're rendering this in the YouTube 4K uh, preset H.264, of course, you can see the CPU isn't really doing too much. Actually, most of this load is being dumped to the 3070 Ti, which is why having a powerful graphics card in a rendering rig matters. But also, check out Intel UHD graphics. It is also working like a boss. So you can imagine that not having this does obviously cripple your rendering performance a bit. It can also cripple your, your scrubbing across the timeline that I showed earlier. Um, keep in mind, this is obviously just a, a very basic bare bones uh, render. We don't have any adjustment layers or effects or anything overlapping the five minute clip, but we were able to render this five minute clip in 4K in literally one minute. That's one minute for every five minutes of 4K footage. That is dang impressive. And that's why, again, my own rig uses a very similar CPU from Intel. Now let's transition to some games. I have Dirt 5 here. This is in 1440p high preset. I do have ray trace shadows enabled. And you can see we're still hitting well over 100 FPS. We're pointing to the entire duration of this benchmark here. The CPU is actually more or less kind of just chilling there. You can see around 50 degrees Celsius. The Kraken AIO is doing a great job keeping the CPU in check, uh, but the uh, the graphics card, the GPU, uh, is what is really being stressed here, uh, almost 100% utilization throughout, and you can see our frequency to the right of that, around 1900 megahertz, and uh, GPU memory, about five gigabytes or so being utilized. Now contrast this with GTA 5, which is gonna be a tad more balanced, although I just noticed that there's water missing in this first shot of the benchmark, that's really strange. Anyway, uh, you can see almost 200 FPS in this flyover. Of course, that will dip once you uh, start to approach ground level and there are a lot more things going on. But uh, the CPU's being leveraged, uh, not too much, but the GPU really isn't either. This is just optimization. It's an older title, but I did want to show it because it's still a popular game that folks like to play. Uh, again, very close to 200 FPS in this shot. Skipping ahead to the Hummer shot, we're yeah, closer to 100, but still very playable in 1440p, high settings across the board with no AA. And last here we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This one again is mid to high 100 FPS range. The CPU is being used a bit more here so you can see it is warming up a tad, but the graphics card is still the limiting factor. Again, this is why it's so important to have a beefy graphics card uh, when you're playing in higher resolutions. Uh, the frame rate is going to more or less depend on the type of CPU that you have, of course, uh, but the graphics card is what's going to really allow you to crank up in-game settings, uh, as is the case here. This is DX12. Uh, we have ray tracing enabled. We also have uh, the high preset running. Uh, last year, I wanted to show you 3D Mark Time Spy, just to give you an idea of where the system stacks up among the rest. I love this demo, even though the demo really isn't a part of the benchmark itself. It's just very cool seeing this play out. But anyway, here is our score, 14,902. The graphics score is 14,804. Uh, it's, it's very, I mean, it's very predictable. Uh, this kind of system, you can see it averages better than 87% of all submitted results. So this is a killer system. Uh, just to give you an idea again of kind of where it compares, uh, this is again a 20, a mid, you know, mid 2000s thousands uh, dollar PC and to get better than 87% of all results is pretty sweet. Uh, of course, if we wanted to bump this up a tad more, we could jump to a 3080 or even a 3090, and I imagine we'd score in the 95th, maybe higher percentile. So I think by now you have a pretty good idea where this Creator PC stacks up. It is a heck of a gaming rig. I'm sure that's no surprise to anyone who knows anything about this tech. Uh, it's, it's very good at pretty much anything, and it's finely balanced as well between CPU and GPU threaded applications. So some of our games were almost fully maxing out that graphics card, uh, but it's nice to know that that card is a very powerful one as well in your system, uh, so it's not necessarily sweating too hard uh, compared to the CPU. Now, of course, the elephant in the room is the fact that this build does cost $2,700, as we previously mentioned, and this price is subject to change. Of course, I talked to NZXT about this ahead of time because I wanted them to be okay with me showing the PC Part Picker link. Uh, I'll show it again here on screen. Uh, just to get an idea of what you could build this for yourself, I always try to include this, even in sponsored videos, I want there to be as, as much transparency as possible for the viewer. Uh, what you can get if you decide to assemble things yourself versus what you're essentially paying as a markup for a BLD service or something like that to handle things for you. Uh, a few other things you want to know going into 
into this uh, that could make up for some of that difference in cost. You're obviously going to get NZXT's two-year uh, parts and labor warranty, so that's something you usually won't get with individual components. You'll get individual component warranties, of course, uh, but if you have any issue at all with your system, you can go directly to NZXT in the case of their BLD uh, systems and their pre-builds. You're also, in this case, going to get a system that is tailored to specific workloads. It's very clearly a great gamer. It's also a great content creator, hence the name Creator PC. Uh, and what, that's part of the service here. And NZXT is kind of curating these components for you, whereas if you were building yourself, you'd have to do that work. And a lot of folks, I'm, I'm certain, are watching this thinking, Greg, that's the whole point. I like being able to choose my own parts. That's the best part about building a PC, and that's fine. I understand that's that this isn't for you, if that's the case. But there are many out there who might be considering an NZXT pre-built, and I want to be as, as clear as possible about what to expect here, why the price might differ a bit from what you could pay if you were building yourself. Um, there, there are always those caveats. I try to be pretty critical with these, uh, and even in this sponsored video, NZXT is allowing me to be uh, upfront with you guys about what you're getting uh, and, and what extra services might be tacked in for that price you're paying. On top of that, of course, you don't have to worry about packaging. Everything is taken care of very nicely. You've got this easy packs in there that expand and keep your graphics card, uh, your CPU cool, etc., in place during shipping because, I mean, who knows what's going on with, you know, the shipping companies out there that just toss these boxes around. I've been a victim of that uh, on more than one occasion, and it's no fun. So it's great to see NZXT package these very nicely. It's just peace of mind uh, when you're spending this much on a build. Now, if you decide that this is, let's say, too much horsepower or maybe not enough, maybe you want to step it up, uh, you know, a notch or two above this, and this is already great. Um, there are many different BLD pre-builds to choose from, from NZXT. You could go with, uh, say, the starter PC lineup, right? Which is usually just going to use integrated graphics that'll use maybe like a Ryzen 5600G or 5700G APU, uh, and there won't be a discrete graphics card, and that's in an effort to save cost, right? To keep it entry level for folks in that market. Um, they, they offer those systems. You could buy an NZXT H1 Mini, let's say. Uh, those Mini pre-builds are very compact. They fit in very small spaces, which can be convenient if you're traveling, if you have not a lot of real estate on your desk, let's say. Um, or you could step even up the Creator Series here to an RTX 3090, again, 12900K. That's the max Creator system you can buy from them. And I think it costs something like four grand, but it has a 3090 in it. I mean, that alone is like half the budget, right? And I can tell you, just based on the, my current editing rig, right? I have a 12900K and a 2080 Ti in my current rig. And I use that for editing almost every single day. They're, they're very, very similar to each other. And, you know, doing this as long as I have, I've kind of got an idea of what works best and what doesn't, of course, with the integrated graphics in these Intel CPUs. You, can see, you saw how much that helped in Premiere Pro. And that's another thing that, in, that NZXT is trying to sculpt here. They know that if you're going to buy a creator system and you're into Premiere Pro and other uh, software suites like it, you might need that integrated graphics for that extra kick. And that's why they threw uh, 12700K in here and again, up to a 12900K. Of course, the NVIDIA graphics card here for CUDA acceleration, again, in Adobe Suite programs. It just, you can tell it's curated for that need. And that's always nice to see. They're not just throwing hardware in here and labeling it something. This is strategically picked out for whatever workload you have in mind. And that's why the Creator Series exists. That's why they have their gaming lineups. That's why they have their mini lineups. I think it makes sense by this point. So on that note, I suppose all that's left to do then is talk about the giveaway, which I'm sure you've been waiting to hear about. We unfortunately had to limit things to just continental US and Canada for this one, just because shipping costs are gonna be so expensive. I'm kidding. I'm, I'm joking. I'm not going to do that to you guys again. Uh, we, we try to balance these out. We try to do, you know, if we have to do uh, a local or Cotton 48 giveaway, something like that, I always try to balance it out with a global one or as global as we can get it. And that's what we're going to do here. So shipping, um, it's going to be pretty pricey, but it is what it is. And we've talked with NZXT and they're very cool about opening this up to pretty much the entire world with very few exceptions. You'll find those in the terms uh, in the giveaway link, which is also in the description. But I just wanted to tell you guys that it's global because that's... I love that. I love seeing the excitement in the comment section when we announce something like that. So uh, best of luck. This exact system right here will be given away. So now that is all for this one. Thank you all for watching. And thanks again to NZXT for supporting the channel and for sponsoring this video. If you want to learn more about the Creator PC series or any other BLD pre-built that NZXT offers, again, check out the top link in this video's description. If you enjoyed this one, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing. Leave a comment down below. Remember to enter the giveaway. And I'll catch you in the next one. My name is Greg. Thanks for learning with me.